Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at Cisco's uh, Unified Border Element, the latest iteration of Unified Border Element Cube licensing. I'm gonna step through that. Uh, we're gonna look at platform licensing and then cube licensing specifically, and I'll talk about some different use cases as we go through. Let's dive in and check it out. Of course, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. First, let's talk about the platform licensing. In this case, we have the platforms down the left-hand side. We have the ISR 1100 and 4000 series. We have the CSR 1000V, ASR 1000, and the DNA platforms, which are more the Catalyst uh, 8000 series routers that are relatively new, at least as of this recording. From there, we have our platform licenses and then additional licensing notes. Uh, let's talk about what each does, and then I'll talk a little bit more about when you would use each particular one. First, ISRs, you need the Unified Communications feature license on the box no matter what. If you add security, which will be SIP TLS and that type of thing, you do need the security license as well. So a VSEC router or something of that sort. If you go above 250 secure sessions, you also need to add the HSEC which, uh, license, which is you know higher throughput with encryption. So definitely keep that in mind as well. CSR 1000. This can be tricky. There is the application experience, the AppX license, and then there is the all feature li license, which is the AX license. Uh, if the only thing you see on the page is AX, you may think that you're getting AppX or vice versa. So definitely keep in mind that these are two separate things. There is also a throughput uh, license or subscription that you're buying to get that media traffic through the box as well. ASR 1000, pretty straightforward for both secure and unsecure sessions. Advanced IP services is what you need. If you are doing box-to-box -box redundancy, you will need the firewall and NAT redundancy licenses from a high availability perspective. I don't believe these are very costly, but you do need them and they will trip you up when you go to configure it if you don't have them. Finally, that Catalyst 8000 series platform license, uh, i.e. the DNA platform, uh, essential subscription is needed in both secure and unsecure uh, you know, scenarios. Keep in mind with this platform, you do need to ensure that the proper bandwidth tier is licensed to capture the throughput. Now, you might say, when do I use which license? Well, typically you're gonna know your application, will you require SIP TLS or something of the sort? Uh, of course, if you do, then you definitely need the secure option. If you're connecting to more of a legacy or traditional PSTN provider, that gives you a private circuit. And there's really no major uh, security concerns around the encryption. You'll use a standard build in the non-secure category here. Likewise, if you're connecting two IP PBXs together, maybe of IAN Cisco, for instance, on premise, you may be looking more towards the, you know, the uh, standard issue, the non-secure type. If you're in a highly secure environment doing really anything, you're probably going to be looking at encryption. If you're using Microsoft Teams doing direct routing, Microsoft Teams does take uh, TLS encryption when connecting to their service. So definitely need the secure session license for anything with direct routing. So keep that in mind as well. So with the hardware platform licensing out of the way, we will talk about cube licensing specifically. This is the licensing for concurrent sessions uh, through the device. So first L-Cube is the top level SKU. Cube 14-T-STD is the standard trunking license. And you can see from the diagram here, this is you know termination of sessions from a service provider. This would be something that you would put in front of your IP PBX, Unified Communications Manager, really any IP PBX. And then uh, of course the phones will register to that PBX for call control sessions to the PSTN will go out through your border controller. Uh, you have one license per concurrent session in this model. Similarly, you have the cube 14 t dash enhanced license. This is an enhanced trunk feature set. Uh, in other words, this is the license that is used to provide box to box redundancy. Now this would be two session border controllers or two cubes in the same data center with direct failover. This provides inside the same data center failover for live calls, really. Keep that in mind, you do need the enhanced license when doing box to box redundancy. Cube14-MP is the media proxy license. Now this is used in a case where you may have uh, you know, 
call recording or you need to fork multiple uh, fork an audio stream to multiple call recorders. So you do need a license per recording destination would probably be the easiest way to say it. So wherever that call splits off, you do need to license the media proxy as well. Finally, we have the unified border element line side license. Now this is for IP phones that register to a SIP proxy out in the public or public, you know, SIP service provider that type of thing. If their registration is proxied through a cube, you may be able to offer some survivability features. Your architecture will dictate this and uh, you know give you that additional functionality uh, if it is needed. Hopefully that's been a helpful refresher on Cisco's Unified Border Element licensing. If you have questions, comments, tips, tricks, please leave them in the video comments section below. Reach out to your Cisco account team, your Cisco reseller. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you back soon and uh, we'll see you then.